straight ahead on OC News, the U.S. government comes to a screeching halt. Everyone seems to have an opinion on the issue, including a group of fourth graders. And we'll find out more about the Newman Club on campus and have a special interview with the vice president. And fast food is getting to be less fast. We'll explain straight ahead on OC News. Hello and welcome to OC News. I'm Sarah Jerome. And I'm Allie Smith. OC News is brought to you by the Broadcast Journalism Department at Cal State Fullerton. A verdict has finally been reached in the Michael Jackson wrongful death trial. A jury found that AEG Live hired Dr. Conrad Murray for the company is not responsible for the Jackson's death. Following five months of testimony, the verdict was read at 3.30 p.m. at the Stanley Moss Courthouse in downtown LA. The jury also held that AEG is not liable because Murray, who administered Jackson's lethal dose of propofol, propofol that led to the singer's death in 2009, was competent to perform the work he was hired for. The Jackson family will not receive any of the $290 million in personal damages the lawyer asked for. An arrest has been made following the sexual assault of a student at Eleanor Roosevelt High School in Eastvale. According to authorities, two boys have been booked on multiple felony sexual assault charges at the Riverside County Juvenile Detention Center. A school administrator reported the incident, which happened after school hours on school property. In a statement released by the Riverside County Sheriff's Department, investigators determined that the sexual assault was an isolated incident. Anyone with information is urged to call Investigator Pabelko with the Harupa Valley Station at 951-955-2600. The Fullerton City Council has approved a housing project for seniors in a 3-to-1 vote during its meeting Tuesday night. The nearly $10 million project, codenamed Alexander, will include 95 units of affordable housing on Commonwealth Avenue. Funds for the project will come from the 2010 Taxable Allocation Housing Bond Review Revenue. Residents who attended the meeting expressed concern over a lack of resources for the homeless. Council member Jan Flory recognized the concerns but expressed her lack of support on a citywide anti-camping ordinance, which is a popular among supporters. It's been offered in select areas already, but a Braille gift card will now be available at all Starbucks registers. The company made the announcement today, Wednesday. The card was originally introduced September 2011 at the urging of disability advocates. Starbucks says it was asked to offer it year-round by a mother who says her blind daughter appreciates the independence the card gives her. A representative of the Braille Authority of North America says the, she was not aware of any other company offering a Braille gift card. When we come back, we'll take a look at what's happening in sports this weekend. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. The odds of this daughter of a clergyman spending 11 weeks at number one on the U.S. singles charts? One in 19 million. The odds of going on to win six Grammy Awards? One in 1.4 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 150. I'm Tony Braxton, and I encourage you to learn the signs of autism at AutismSpeaks.org. It looks like a busy and exciting weekend in the sports world. Cyrus Palace Band has more. Hello, I'm Cyrus Palace Band, and I will be previewing sport games for this upcoming weekend. We'll start with Cal State Fullerton Athletics. 
The Titans men's soccer team will travel to Santa Barbara to take on UC Santa Barbara in a match that will take place tomorrow night at 730. The Titans will look for the third consecutive win on the season after de defeating Nebraska of Omaha and Grand Canyon the last two weeks. The club is 5-6 and six on the year so far, but has lost two close games in overtime. They will take on a UC Santa Barbara team that is 6-4 on the year and fresh off a 1-0 victory over Loyola University. On the women's side of things, girls soccer squares off against the University of Hawaii tomorrow at 7 p.m. at Titan Stadium. Tickets are available at the box office. After defeating Gonzaga this past Sunday 2-1, the girls club will look for their sixth victory of the season. However, it won't be easy as Hawaii comes in on a two-game winning streak against defeating Hawaii Pacific and Northern Arizona. Both teams have winning streaks on the line as it, as it is expected to be a highly contested matchup. On the professional side of things, we turn our attention to week five of the NFL and preview some of the premier matchups going on. We start with a highly anticipated matchup of two of the best teams in the AFC, the New England Patriots and the Cincinnati Bengals. New England will look to improve to 5-0 as they travel to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals this Sunday. The Bengals come in with a disappointing loss to division rivals Cleveland as they lost 17-6. Pro Bowl wide receiver A.J. Green has had a slow start to the season and Cincinnati desperately needs to get him going if they look to knock off the undefeated Patriots. The Patriots will play their first game of the season without five-time Pro Bowler Vince Wilfork who was lost for the season with a torn Achilles tendon against the Atlanta Falcons last Sunday. Kickoff is, is at 10 a.m. Pacific time, and the game can be seen on CBS. Turning to the premier NFC matchup, the New Orleans Saints will take their 4-0 record to Chicago to face the 3-1 Bears, and will, who would look to avenge an awful loss to, the Detro to division rivals Detroit. The Saints come in with one of the league's best offenses, led by veteran quarterback Drew Brees, who had himself quite a night last Monday, throwing for four touchdown passes against the Miami Dolphins. The Saints also have the luxury of having one of the game's best tight ends, Jimmy Graham, who had himself quite a night catching two touchdown passes against Miami and has had six touchdown passes already on the year through four games. While New Orleans is 4-0, they certainly are a different team away from home, not to mention Soldier Field is one of the league's toughest places to win a game. This game will definitely be an intriguing matchup between two of the NFC's best teams. Kickoff is at 10 a.m. and the game, game can be seen on Fox. The Sunday night primetime matchup will feature two of the best defenses from a year ago, the San Francisco 49ers and the Houston Texans. After starting the season 2-0, the Texans have dropped their last two games, including a disappointing home loss against the Seattle Seahawks, in which they led by 14 points in the second half. Texans quarterback Matt Schaub has been under some pressure as he was booed at the last home game after throwing a pick six in the second half, which ended up being the game-tying touchdown. The reigning NFC champion 49ers look to get back on track after got back on track last week after a convincing 35 to 11 victory over division rival St. Louis. San Francisco, a team many picked to win the Super Bowl, will have a chance to improve to 3 and 2 on the year with a home victory over Houston. Kickoff will be at 5:25 p.m. and the game can be viewed nationally on NBC with Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth calling the game. Finally, in the baseball world, the MLB playoffs will continue this weekend with wild card weekend coverage. The reigning AL champion Tigers will begin their playoffs in Oakland tomorrow night as they will play the Oakland A's in Game 1. Game 2 of the series will also be in Oakland on Saturday as well before the game shifts to Detroit for three games later on in the week. This series is a rematch of last year's wild card series which featured Detroit defeating Oakland three games to two. On the NL side, the Los Angeles Dodgers will begin their quest for a title tonight in Atlanta for Game 1 of their series. The Dodgers, the Dodgers will be playing their first playoff game since 2009 as the team is one of the favorites to win it all. The game will begin at 5.37 p.m. Pacific time and will feature starting pitchers Clayton Kershaw and Chris Medlin. Game 2 of the series will take place tomorrow night in Atlanta as well before the scene shifts back, shifts back to Southern California on Sunday for Game 3 which will take place at Dodger Stadium. With a very busy weekend in sports, make sure you keep up with all the action one way or another and catch a game. Back to you guys. drive through times are slowing down. That's according to an annual study by fast food industry trade publication, QSR Magazine. It measures the average drive through speed from order to pick up at seven major fast food restaurants, including McDonald's and Taco Bell. The study found the average drive through wait time is nearly 181 seconds, about 8 seconds slower 
compared to last year's average, which was nearly 173 seconds. Chick-fil-A was the slowest with an average time of nearly 204 seconds. Wendy's was the fastest with an average drive through wait time of nearly 134 seconds. Researchers say the overall slowdown is the mostly the result of busier drive through lanes and more complex new products being offered at fast food chains. For years, women have been getting conflicting information about whether or not they should seek out hormone replacement therapy to help them with the symptoms of menopause. Now a new study may give women some clear answers. Shelby Lynn has more in today's Health Minute. Scientists have just released the results of a major long-term study on the safety of hormone replacement therapy, or HRT, for menopausal women. The bottom line? For most healthy women who have just entered menopause, taking HRT short-term to battle symptoms is probably okay. But don't take it long term in hopes that it will prevent diseases such as heart disease or cancer. Taking HRT when older poses more risks. Hormone replacement therapy is used to replace female hormones that are no longer produced after menopause. These drugs help prevent hot flashes and night sweats that can affect menopausal women. For decades, doctors thought HRT was also good for women's hearts. To test this and other issues, scientists decided to conduct a large trial called the Women's Health Initiative. But the HRT trial was suspended early because women were having serious health issues, including higher risks for heart problems, breast cancer, and stroke. For this new study, scientists looked back at 13 years of research on the WHI participants. They concluded that it was risky to take HRT long term. But for healthy women with severe symptoms early in menopause, taking HRT for a short period of time might be worth the risk. For today's Health Minute, I'm Shelby Lynn. It's the first week of October, and that can only mean one thing. Time to think pink. October is National Breast Cancer Awareness, Awareness Month, an annual health campaign to raise awareness of the disease and the importance of early detection. According to the American Cancer Society, it is estimated that there will be nearly 233,000 new cases of invasive breast cancer and nearly 40,000 women will succumb to breast cancer in 2013 alone. The Susan G. Komen Foundation explains that early detection is key, as mammogram screening can detect cancer at earlier stages, when chances of survival are highest. For more information or events during the month, visit National Breast Cancer Awareness Month online at NBCAM.org. When we come back, we have a guest in studio to answer your questions about Cal State Fullerton's very own Newman Club. Also, we've heard what adults have to say. Next, we'll get some insight on what kids think about the government shutdown when we return. Disaster strikes without warning. What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. I really want to show you something. today? For great play ideas, visit www.smallstep.gov. The government shutdown from the perspective of fourth graders. Children at an Immaculate Conception Elementary School in New York are weighing in on the situation. And Chris Cuomo found out they have some advice for Congress. Carl, what do you know about the shutdown? They're going to shut down the government because of some, some of the government people. When I say shut down the government, what does that mean? Like the government is going to stop for, for a while. 
Does that sound scary? Yeah. yeah. Now, the big things stay. The people who protect us, they stay. But a lot of people who work for the government wind up not getting paid until they reopen the government. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sounds horrible. That good. Jocelyn, let me ask you something. When you are being taught how to work with somebody else in a situation, what are you taught? What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to share the things that you do and you're supposed to agree and compromise when you have different agreements. So in Congress, they didn't do it. They said, you want to do one thing, I want to do another. We can't agree, so let's stop the government and not pay anybody and not do lots of things that we're supposed to do. Who likes that solution? Oh, double thumbs down. Double thumbs down all yep. over the back row. Oh, I forgot to mention something. The members of Congress, when the government is shut down and they send people home to their families with no pay, they still get paid. How? They might like do another job. No, no, they're not doing any job, but they still get paid. Jocelyn, two thumbs down. Does that sound right? No, because if one person gets paid and the other person does, doesn't, that's not fair to the people that don't get paid. What should I do with the money if I do get paid? Let's say the law says I get paid. What should I do with my money, Prabhuji? I think like, I uh, could like divide it into half and give it to everybody. Divide yeah. it into half and give it to everybody. You get money for being Shh. a politic? I know, they pay you to go down there and have all this fun. Who knew? Can I run right now? <laughs> How old are you? Nine. If it's available, if I can swing it, would you want to run? And what would you want to do? What would be your platform? Why do we vote for Carl? Because I'll make the world better. Ooh, that's strong. You're all Congress members right now, okay? Nicole and Jocelyn, while friends up until this day now disagree, they do not like what to do. How do we solve it? Jonathan, Prabjeet does not like your ideas. She thinks they're dumb. And in fact, you're dumb too <laughs> for having those ideas. Well, we could compromise like Jocelyn said and we could agree somehow. Carl, what do you do if your president and Congress won't compromise? I'll tell them, I'll tell them, um, get along just now because people are losing, are going to be losing their jobs. What's the president supposed to tell Congress? Nicole? The president's supposed to tell Congress that you better cut it out and get back to what you're supposed to do. And what if they say no? Then the president fires you. He can't. Only the voters can. He's not a king. Who's going to fix it? Nicole, how do we fix it? Hmm. You can fix it by if, if the government's shut down, then, hmm. Actually, that's a really hard one. Right? How do we settle things that we don't agree on, Jocelyn? You should do the right thing, not the wrong thing. You should at least give the effort to agree with somebody instead of acting like a bunch of babies. You should act like adults because you are and agree with people. Nine years old, why, does this, why is this so easy for you to figure out? Yes? Because, because we're kids and sometimes kids, we, we have smart ideas than grown-ups. We have a guest in studio with us today. Jessica Westberg is Vice President of the Newman Club. Welcome, Jessica. Thank you. How, what is the Newman Club? The Newman Club is a Catholic club on campus. We really try and emphasize fellowship as well as community service. Um, we're making that a big part this year and partake in more community service. And how long have you been involved? This is my fourth year in Newman, so I've gotten to see it kind of grow and change over the years. What would you describe as the purpose of the club? Well, it's definitely hard to stay faithful when you come to college, so it's a way for all of us to kind of um, like join together and, and stay strong in our faith when it can be really difficult. So for people that are kind of struggling, what resources does the club provide? Well, we offer Mass on campus every Wednesday and Thursday in the TSU at 12. So that's always nice. People can come before or after class. It's only a half hour. And then we also have meetings every Thursday night at 7 at St. Juliana's across the street. And we offer a lot of community service opportunities on weekends. So what would you say is your next exciting event that's coming up? 
Well, actually, this Saturday we're going to a festival for fall over in Chino Hills at St. Paul's, the Apostles Church. So that should be fun. There's lots of food and games. How exciting, and how can students get involved? Um, we have a Facebook page and a group. Just look up CSUF Newman. It should be there. And we also have a group for men and a group for women in case you just want to talk to people of your men or women. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much for being here. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me. Miley's back in the news. That and a shocking footage of a school bus crash. More when we return. It's one of the many ways to fight osteoarthritis pain. For more information on managing pain, go to fightarthritispain.org. I really want to show you something. Play today? For great play ideas, visit www.smallstep.gov. Titan Radio is Cal State Fullerton's own radio station located in the basement of Public Library. Students can stop by and pick up an application during operating hours. Anyone who has a computer and internet can listen to us, www.titanradio.org. A lot of people who want to pursue TV and film usually start out in radio, so it's always a great opportunity. Interesting news about Miley Cyrus, The Simpsons, and what to expect in entertainment this week. Marky McManus has more. Sarah, good afternoon everyone. I'm Marky McManus this week in entertainment. Miley Cyrus, The Movement, will premiere tonight at 8 p.m. on MTV. The highly anticipated hour-long documentary takes us behind the scenes and into the personal life of the controversial former Disney star. From the twerking to the wrecking ball and the 2013 VMA performance we're still talking about, The Movement covers all the topics the world still has on their mind. Is she a, girl, a good girl gone wild, or is all this controversy a savvy business plan? Tune in tonight to find out. Miley's new album, Bangers, is also set to release Tuesday, October 8th. In breaking Simpsons news, the creator of the show reveals that one of the major characters in the season will be killed off. There has been no confirmation yet of which of the yellow skin characters will die. But according to the creator, the actor who voices the role has won an Emmy. Guess we will all have to tune in to the 25th season of the show to find out. Coming up this weekend in the box office is the space disaster Gravity, starring Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. Also in theaters is Runner Runner, All is Bright, ACOD, Vikingdom, and Nothing Left to Fear. There are some big names performing in town this weekend as well. Bon Jovi will be rocking the Honda Center with classic hits such as You Give Love a Bad Name, Wanted, Dead or Alive, and Living on a Prayer. The Hollywood Bowl also has two big names hitting the stage this weekend. Singer-songwriter John Mayer will be performing Saturday, following up with Maroon 5 Sunday evening. If you've got moves like Jagger, then this is the perfect weekend to hit the town. That's all for this weekend in entertainment. I'm Marky McManus. Back to you. A pair of school buses crash, a plane lands on a highway, and a couple zips down the aisle. Sunlin Miller has today's look at this.
take a look at this video from inside two school buses in Tacoma, Washington. State troopers say one bus driver bumped into a pickup truck, then rear-ended another bus. There were no children on board and no one was hurt. A pilot was forced to make an emergency landing on a Florida highway. The pilot was doing an inspection flight when the vintage plane lost power. So he decided to land on a road because he was too far from an airport. The pilot took off safely from the highway. A North Carolina couple didn't take a traditional walk down the aisle. The two zipped. They took advantage of the zip line course at their wedding venue and zipped to the altar. Because it's awesome and we wanted yeah. to have we wanted to make it the most fun for our guests. The only hitch, they had to pull themselves along the final few feet. For take a look at this, I'm Salman Sarfati. That's gonna do it for us here at OC News. I'm Sarah Jarrell. And I'm Allie Smith. We'll see you on the next edition of OC News.